What up, what up, what it do? Y'all already know who it is. Urban Culture. Coming in with some more juice. And we start straight off the bat with that real Tory Lanez's claim that Megan Thee Stallion's gun is missing is debunked by the state. Now, as you know, on the 18th of November, the state of California responded to Lanez's appeal, which claimed in part that the gun used in Megan's shooting and associated bullet frames have gone missing, which was preventing him from having further tests conducted. The state's response includes a declaration from the senior property officer of the LAPD's Evidence and Property Management Division, the firearm magazine, and the bullet casings, and the bullet fragments are still in the Los Angeles De Poli Police Department's custody. God dang, they said some just the exact opposite of what he said. As a result of this, the state declared Lane's theory unsupported and demonstrably false. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just straight to the point. He was saying that this shit was happening. And they was like, nah, we got it. It's chilling. So everything that you're claiming right now, that shit don't exist, bruh. Enjoy your time. Shouldn't have pulled out no guns and shouldn't have shot at no Megan Thee Stallion. You know she working with it right there. You know, well, I don't know how everything went down. I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna even hop on it. I ain't gonna talk about it. Let's go ahead and segue into something a little bit more uh, kind of convenient and interesting. Basically, Ray J curiously U-turns on Diddy criticism after confrontation with one of Diddy's sons. Check this out. So, Ray J, what is your take on the suggestion that Diddy is powerful enough that he can reach out even if behind bars, like some kind of mob boss, and get people to tell people to shut up or I'll pay you if you shut up and be effective? Look, I don't know how um, how real that is. Um, I think, you know, when you're in jail, I think you, you should also also know how to move and not do stupid stuff like that. Um, I think a lot of the stories are uh, becoming out of control and super extreme. Um, again, you know, you start one way and then as it builds, there's thousands of people coming in, creating a new narrative. And when you do your, your research or your due diligence on it, a lot of it doesn't come back real. So now you're stuck in a position to go, is any of it real or how much of it is real? Um, and, and I think that's where we are now because it just it, they just keep piling on and on and on. And now everybody's starting to feel weird about it and starting to feel like it's all um, it's all starting to look like it's one sided against one man um, and, and people aren't liking it. Do you still believe that we're going to see a lot of bold faced names get pulled into this because of their knowledge or their participation in what Diddy is accused of? You know, I think that there might have been times where people have partied with a certain team of people and it might have been a freak off at that party right but i can guarantee you most of the celebrities that's went to diddy's parties never even heard of a freak off so the freak offs in the beginning sounded really interesting you know and, and, and entertaining i would say but in this space now when you look back where where were the freak offs everybody that's super legitimate that's an a-list celebrity or whatever they say um, it, you know, from my knowledge and just me knowing I've never seen a freak off. Wh what does that really mean? I mean, is that really real? Is, is this 50 50? Are we creating a new narrative for something that's not there? Where wh was it really dope in the baby oil? I mean, what are we, you know, what are, what, what are we doing? Right. Uh, what do you want people to know about the alleged altercation with you and Diddy's sons and uh, your drive and your belief that somebody took a shot at you? Do you believe those are related? And did they change your disposition towards uh, talking about this situation? Well, when you live in L.A., you know, I think a lot of things are, are controlled in, in, in a lot of different ways, whether it's from the underground scene or from the political scene. But what I do know is that the people that did that to me, um, you know, trying to work out something when you know who it is is always the best uh, the best plan, right? I've seen a lot of violence happen just because certain people wouldn't sit down and figure out, you know, what can happen in a positive way as opposed to it going another route. So in that situation, you know, we're doing everything we can to make sure that, you know, things are, are super safe and that everybody can just live and enjoy life. And whether it's the truth, whether it's a lie, whatever it is, it stays on the front line. It doesn't go into something super violent. That's very important, you know, moving forward. Well, and as far as, you know, as far as, it, you know, Go ahead. No, go ahead. As far as what? 
No, and then as far as as, as Diddy's sons, um, yeah, it's it's been a lot. And I think at this point, you know, we had to all sit down and we had to, to really figure out what this looks like and what, what we should do moving forward. And so we've worked out our differences. And I think that when, when we talked in the beginning, you know, creating these mentorship programs and creating something new to help young entrepreneurs when they're falling by the wayside is absolutely needed in these situations. I mean, if you even just look at me, you know, sometimes you need certain guidance before you jump off the edge. And a lot of times that's that's, you know, that's happening in this space that we're in right now. So in reality, there's a lot of mature things that he did comment about, but also that is a very big switch up from what he was already previously saying. I don't doubt that people can grow, people can change, and they can have a change of opinion. So not knocking that in the slightest. I am happy he did speak with them in order to, I guess, squash that. And it was what he was trying to say when he was talking to Nicki Minaj on live. But I just feel like, um, oh no, I just, uh, that dramatic of a switch, that dramatic. But you know, it's not like what he said wasn't a possibility. Um, it will start looking curious as to as it keep piling things on. But from the first hearing of 120 lawsuits, you can expect that there is a lot of material that I'm pretty sure we didn't hear about. And we're just getting that knowledge. But what do y'all think? Go ahead, leave it in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel about, um, you know, Ray J switch up on it. And is he actually saying something that's relevant to the case? Y'all let me know. But stand on the same topic with Diddy because you know there's a lot to cover. Uh, we got how Meek Mill addresses the wild claims of, about the debauched Diddy party. Says it's war on black men. So basically on X, Meek Mill started posting some things here. Speaking his mind. First thing he posted was actually a little screen recording of different articles that were posted, of course, about Diddy and of course Meek Mill's birthday and all this extra but it says none of these publications are owned by black men posting things to destroy the names and brands of the culture i'm gonna stand on this i know it's somebody behind this i'm gonna start a war behind it too when i find out posted another link that says just think about it you're waking up to a bunch of non-black owned publications posting major lies about me where all the PR people go that was around me. Everybody see what's going on. I'm not going to be quiet. It was war on black men. Then there's a couple removed tweets. One being, when I see page six post something, it gives me a bad vibe. Go back two years ago. They posted only good Meek Mills news. I know how these things work. Like what just happened with Mike Tyson? Show his ass out. <laughs> Get him beat by a young white kid. Come on, it's a mockery. Why nobody looking at the fact of who we consuming this news from? I went to chat GPT. None of these people are even Americans and not <laughs> and not close to the black party. These weak ass stories, this wasn't even puff party. It's not nothing to be quiet about if you're smart. <laughs> this man, man. They putting black men in jail off stories. I wish Puff, well, he's a black man. I hope he didn't uh, do most of the shit they saying he did. Why y'all so scared to talk y'all? Y'all must go shit the closet. <laughs> y'all must go shit the closet, damn. My past, the streets, is nothing to hide. I'm glad that he said I hope he didn't do most of the shit. Uh, <laughs> most of the shit they accusing him of. Because I'm pretty sure he know he did some of the shit. All right, all right, now I'm just talking shit. Then he said, uh, he puts the last post saying, I see how Pac got like that. Personally, I'm glad that he can be enraged and he's starting to notice some of these things. But at the same time, it's like, are you now starting to be mad about it because the finger's pointed at you? Or are you getting some bad publicity from this stuff? Like, what? Is it really genuine or is it, you know, how sometimes when they say people sorry, like if you catch them cheating, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. But it's like, no, you sorry. I caught you cheating. You ain't sorry for cheating. Same thing. Are you just sorry now that you are associated with him during this time where all this shit is happening? Because you wasn't in outrage when it was just him or at least you wasn't talking about it. You know, I don't know. I'm just I'm going to leave that to y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. But we're going to go ahead and uh, touch base on one last thing here before we get off the Diddy topic, which is 
Diddy finally gets an offer on his LA mansion. And it's actually a little under half of what he was asking for. So as y'all know, Diddy's LA mansion, um, he was he was asking for $61 million while he was selling it. Well, Bellwood Investments put in their bid for 30 million. They're the same ones who bought Kanye's uh, Malibu property for 21 million, which made for a nearly 40 million loss on Ye. Con, Ye. It just felt like saying it like that way. Uh, but are they just looking at these things as easy, you know, easy pickings? We just gonna go ahead, find a rapper who's struggling to find somebody who's going through some shit, buy it for a low price. I mean, that's how you hustle. I respect it 100%. I respect it all the way. If you got it, cool, let them get it. Craziest thing about it was this same LA property is the one that, of course, police raided uh, after the parties happened. And they they posted that he left that place trash, but it's like the police raided it and they don't clean up shit after they raid something. They go and look for what they're looking for and then dip out. But there's a whole bunch of shit missing hard drives, documents. Papers, everything just kind of just torn up in a place, but it's still a nice house. Apparently, it's a 13,000 square foot property. Um, it has, according to the property description, there's a fully remodeled home, boasts a luxurious paneled entry foyer with a sweeping staircase bathed in natural sunlight, along with a large living room, formal dining room, wine cellar, office and a gourmet kitchen with a family room and separate catering kitchen. Mm. Also has a state-of-the-art theater that seats 35 guests, and it has a two-story guest house with a large gym and a recording studio and additional guest bedrooms. And it's also a 1.3 acre estate, god damn. A resort-like swimming pool with a waterfall and a grotto and a basketball court, a spa house, and an outdoor lo- Mm, I think it's Logia. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that bitch. Uh, with a barbecue and a bar and pizza oven. God, that's a good ass house. And they buying that mug for a 30, or at least they put in a bid for it just for 30 million. Although it was slightly over 60. That's crazy. I wouldn't even think about that shit as an Airbnb. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. We look before I start getting jealous, we're gonna go ahead and hop to a different topic because that shit just pissed me off how much this man had in his house and I can't even get me a regular goddamn I can't even get hot water in my tub let alone a hot tub so we got Jay-Z's team rock sues Kansas City Police Department and local government what in the fuck Jay-Z over here got people suing next Let, let's see what photo so basically his social justice division of rock team filed a lawsuit against the Kansas City Police Department and the city's government for what they say is stonewalling their investigation into wrongful convictions in the county. And the documents filed on Tuesday, November 19th. Team Rock says KCKPD has failed to comply with a public records request made under the Kansas Open Records Act in November 2023. The group alleges that the department has withheld documents related to claims of abuse and misconduct by officers. Despite paying $2,200 in fees for access, of the 225 documents provided, Team Rock claims they mostly consist of unrelated materials like personnel and training records. The lawsuit reads, Kansas City residents have suffered enormously as a result of KCKPD abuses. Some have been framed for crimes they did not commit. Some have been coerced into providing false testimony. Some have been sexually assaulted. Some have endured brutal beatings and some have even been unalive. Rather than promoting a culture of transparency and accountability, the KCKPD has a long history of turning a blind eye at best and even covering up, if not worse, abusive and or corrupt conduct by its officers. God damn, they went straight for the jugular. Now, the lawsuit highlights a pattern of alleged misconduct within the KCKPD, including accusations of framing individuals, coercing false testimony. You know, all it, y'all just heard it. I, I ain't even got to. I ain't even really got to go back and reset that. But it seems like things are getting crazy, and I think it's cool now that we have somebody, of course responding and using his power to go against things that are there from the government 
who are abusing their power, you know, and I feel like that's going to open some doors for a lot of people who may have been egregiously uh, wrongfully accused and convicted of crime. But I'm looking forward to see how this turns out. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all think. We touch base on this. We definitely going to be keeping our ears to the streets when it comes to this shit, right? Chill. Let's go ahead, segue, jump forward, shift gears and go into something else. When we talk about future finally addresses Drake and Kendrick Lamar feud. So basically in an interview with GQ alongside Metro Boomin, uh, future played coy when asked about the feud where he said there was a beef. I didn't even know there was a beef. I know they had nothing going on. I ain't never participated in rap battles, man. <laughs> Which, of course, the interviewer uh, hinted towards that, uh, suggesting that it was a joke. But shortly after, Future did admit that he was confused by the fallout from Kendrick's motherfucker Big Three, nigga, it's just Big Me line. And according to Future, he belongs in the Big Three conversation and had more of a right to be upset than anybody. He said, quote unquote, I'm supposed to be the one who gets mad. I'm still confused about that. Nobody cares what I think. That's what was so fucked up about this shit. To the point where I'm so player that I ain't even said anything about how I feel about it. Like, why is everybody mad when he was talking about me on my song? So y'all just forgot about me. Ain't, I ain't part of the big three. I'm I'm nobody on my song, man. If I didn't get mad, nobody should have gotten mad. If I would have been really mad about uh, about it and I made something out of it, then someone else could be like, oh, I can make something else about it. <laughs> I mean, I respect it, but I still don't think I mean, future make good music, but I ain't going to say he in a big three or he was in a big three. But I can understand the uh, stance that he took on it. But I, again, I hand that over to y'all. What y'all think about that? Y'all think he really got a point to being upset about not only the line, but not being included in the big three? That's something I'll let y'all think on. Let's shift gears when we talk about how Sean apologizes for his unsavory comments about Kendrick Lamar. Check this out. I, I would say I made a mistake about Kendrick. Lamar. Uh, take that back. I, I, you know, <laughs> I think that was that was definitely a mistake. So right. Drake is incredible, and and Lamar has proven me completely wrong. But everybody got it at the time. But I was dealing with whatever I was dealing with. I didn't I didn't appreciate it. Right. But he's obviously proven to be you know one of the greatest uh, musicians um, you know in our generation. So definitely yeah. that, that's when I take that. <laughs> I think that's funny. As he was uh you know as he was locked up, there is some stuff that he noticed, and he started having his opinion about certain artists that was out there but you know that hindsight 2020 he was like i gotta apologize i was completely wrong about kendrick lamar where he thought he wasn't gonna last or he was just some new people coming up just here for the moment going tomorrow was like nope i have to accept that one i was completely wrong about it i feel that i respect it sean i think that's something that we need nowadays is people being very willing to own up to the mistakes that they are uh, they've already put out into the world or at least own up to what they're saying about how certain artists are or what they're doing. Hey, look, own up to it. You was wrong. And I got it. You know what? That's anti politician because he's a politician, but you usually don't see honest ones, which is pretty tight. But just going into the final story here, let's talk about how Yak Gotti secures a major legal win in the YSL case. So as y'all know, Young Thug, of course, uh, accepted a plea deal last month and was released from prison and he'll spend 15 years on probation and must abide by various release conditions regardless his supporters are thrilled that he's back and he's home but the same can't be said for yak Gotti, who refused the plea deal around the same time that young thug accepted his his lawyer explained how his client fully intends to take this to the jury and get their not guilty verdicts and go home and he's at least reportedly secured one legal win, according to Thugger Daily on X. Basically, the judge granted the defense's motion for directed verdict on three of Yak Gotti's charges. He will no longer be able to be found guilty for the possession of the switch slash drugs found at Young Thug's home. 
Judge Paige Reese Whitaker says, I do not believe that even viewing in the light most favorable to the prosecution, there's evidence upon a rational trier of fact could find the essential elements of possession of those particular items. As for the other charges, though, it would be up to the jury to decide whether or not he's guilty. That is actually a good win. Hey, congratulations on that. I'm hoping that everything works out for you. I'm hoping that justice is served correctly. But for everybody else, thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate you. You already know if it's your first time, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, follow, backflip, dig up a mine, find some gold, some diamonds, whatever it is. Uh, if it's your second time or you're just returning to it, Hey, same thing. Like, subscribe, sus share, subscribe, subscribe, share. Urban culture. Do what you gotta do to make sure you can get back here in time to catch the next video when them bitches drop. But again, we do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Peace.